Hello everyone, my name is Philippe Legaré, and today I'm going to give you some updates on the ClearSpec project. The ClearSpec goals, as a reminder, is to help our community to differentiate between the different types of documents that are manipulated within or around W3C uh, in terms of web specifications. Um, and it's also to establish that only the WC recommendations are actually the sole WC web standards fully endorsed by the consortium. But also in order to help our communities to document and inform about the level of uh, uh, adoptions of our various documents as well. So uh, slide three, we have five projects to help with that and we've made progress, various progress on each of those projects. The incubation challenge works happening within our community groups. The level of adoption, whether you are in a working group or on a community groups, is your specification getting actually adopted out there and how relevant is it? Um, number three is, of course, whether uh, 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 to make sure that people understand that recommendations are the only standards endorsed by W3C uh, as well. Better referencing of editor draft. We have a lot of groups using editor draft and, and we've been trying to either remove the editor draft or for uh, using various techniques or making sure that they are properly referenced and, and clarify a little bit the nomenclature of and naming. Slide four. Uh, so we made a lot of document clarifications among those different projects. So there is a page uh, slash standard slash types where all of those types of documents that we are manipulating are actually talked about. Um, before, all we had was a process that talks about documentation on the recommendation track and some community group uh, uh, pages that were talking about community groups and business groups, basically, on, uh, on that. So we didn't, had, we didn't have a, a single place for that. And, and uh, if you look at that document, at the top, there is a summary table that will tell you, well, depending on the type of documents you're looking at, you can make different assumptions, such as, is it on the standard track uh, at W3C? Um, is it under the patent policy? Do you have royalty-free licensing for those type of documents? What's the level of implementations? And, and, and at the end, which ones are actually endorsed by W3C? And you can see that depending on the level of, uh, 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 depending on the documents, we can make some claims or not. On implementations, you'll notice that the columns varies quite significantly. It basically, it does say it doesn't help much. Just because your WC recommendation does not necessarily mean that you are basically uh, deployed out there on, the, on that. Slide five. Um, so, so, so um, um, these uh, slash standard types doc uh, documentations help a lot at differentiating the different class of many, uh, document that we are manipulating. But we also made uh, modification to the various uh, documents templates used by the groups out there to make sure that the documents that are not within, uh, within uh, 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 working groups uh, our interest groups are not seen as official WC documents in any kind of place or, or way on that. And also we made modifications to some of our editors toolings to avoid that those templates get misused. Uh, prior to that, it was very easy for, for an individual to just reuse one of our working draft templates and basically right there, you would have thought that it was a WC working draft worked on within a working group, even though that wasn't the case. So we made various adaptations to, uh, to that to satisfy some of those uh, projects. Slide six. So when it comes down to the level of adoption, as I said earlier, um, um, it just the status of the documents will not give you uh, an understanding of is it being adopted and used out there on that. And this is a documentation that needs to go within each document because since it varies significantly between the documents. And for that, we need to refine the metrics on how do we actually uh, express this level of adoption and implementations on, the, on, the, on that. And, and, and the goal is over the time to be able to generate reports on the level of adoptions of our specification, consequently of that. So, so for that, uh, Marcos Caceres, has been doing significant work in this area in the past few months. And uh, I will let you uh, listen to him 
talking about uh, how he's been doing. So as Philippe has already mentioned, this project is about showing the different levels of adoption of specifications uh, and that may be in browsers or in other uh, implementation types. So we have two use cases uh, that we're really interested in solving for, which is people entering the specification and landing at the top of the document. So for instance, through a Google search. And we also have people who are coming in, for instance, through MDN or through other sources or through other specifications and landing somewhere in the middle of a specification. We have different audiences for the use cases, naturally. So this may be web developers, implementers, um, and other specification authors or editors and working group collaborators, um, as well as the general public. And everybody has different requirements. So trying to address all those requirements becomes a real challenge. In the following slides, I'll show three solutions that we're currently deploying at the W3C experimentally to figure out this problem. They all have different pros and cons, so I'll walk through those too. The next slide shows our first solution, which is to use data from the website caniuse.com. Caniuse.com sets out to answer the question for web developers, can I use a particular feature? For instance, can I use the payment request API? Can I use the geolocation API? And what it sets out to actually answer is, what browser versions support a particular feature and at what level of support do they actually support that feature? And that may vary. So implementers may have full support for a feature, or they may have partial support, or they may have no support at all. And it, there's a bunch of different grades in between um, and different ways of answering that question. In the next slide, we can see our next deployed solution, which is the MDN boxes. These are little boxes that are embedded in line within a specification and display support for a particular feature of a specification. So this gets down into very minute levels. So for instance, is a particular method or attribute supported on some API? And then in the next slide, we have the last solution that we've been experimenting with, which is displaying the results from web platform tests directly in the header of a specification. This shows how many tests pass and kind of the pass rate is represented by colors. So let's now talk about the pros and cons of each. So in the next slide, well, let's return to can I use. The pros of the can I use data is that it's relatively up to date and it's very well targeted at web developers. The other nice part is that it also is backed by MDN data. So we have two data sources coming together to create a level of authority there. So the cons of this data though, is that for some features, um, it can be a little bit subjective what actually supports means. And it may, in some cases, not back reality. Uh, in other situations, um, the data is not backed by web platform tests. So this means that overall the data is sometimes not very useful for implementers. But at the same time, it's very useful, as I said, for web developers, because it does most of the time answer for them, can I use this feature? Now in the next slide, let's return to MDN boxes and talk about the pros and cons of those. So the pros there is that these boxes are really fit for purpose. They're really targeted, very much describe support for a particular feature. So at the same time, this is kind of a con because it doesn't tell you whether overall the feature can be used. So the, large, the specification as a whole, it just tells you a particular part is supported or not. And this may or may not be useful in that sense. So that's a little bit of a balancing act that needs to be figured out. And finally, moving on to the next slide, we can return to the web platform test and talk about you know, the pros and cons there. We know that the pros is that the results reflect what is tested in specifications, um, and they're very much targeted at spec authors and at implementers. So it serves our community at the W3C very well. But the cons is that these results can be very meaningless for web developers. And they're also extremely limited. Uh, they're limited just because currently web platform tests only test against desktop browsers or primarily desktop browsers. So they're quite limited in the result sets that they provide back. So they can't really answer, can I use this feature? In the next slide, I wanna show you the MDN compact tables. These are essentially what an optimal solution might look like or something that we wanna work off or base off uh, in order to, to meet our goals for this particular project. So what's really nice here, as you can see, is that the table is split into two. Um, we have desktop and mobile, and then we have 
fine-grained feature support for each part of a specification. Now, space that we're trying to target at the top of a specification is quite precious. So we obviously can't display this much information, but we want to get to a point where we can display something similar to this and capture the essence and answer the questions that web developers want answered, which is, can I use this feature and where can I use it? So we, in the next slide, we talk about the, the challenges that we face here. Um, so one challenge is right now that we're very focused on browsers. Um, there are other communities, obviously, at the W3C that we need to cater for, particularly people developing or groups developing uh, data-based standards. Um, we need to convey a, a lot of information in very limited space. And another challenge that we face is that we are presenting information that could very quickly get out of date. So we have static documents on TR, but we have this very dynamic compatibility data, can, which can change at any point for whatever purpose. So a browser vendor may turn off or, or turn on or off a particular feature for whatever reason. And the other challenge that we face is just a visual design challenge. So we could potentially benefit from having a professional designer come and help us uh, figure this out. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marcos. And uh, um, uh, thank you everyone for listening. Um, we're using the spec ed community groups for um, interacting on the ClearSpec project. You have an email address as well as a GitHub uh, link on the slides. Um, and uh, we're going to keep uh, iterating through that uh, project. Thank you. <laughs>